everyone, it is Matthew. Welcome back to a brand new video. And today, we are here with the second vlog from the Madison Regatta. Today is the second day we are here and we have a lot of fun stuff planned. There's some boat racing that gets underway today and there's a lot of stuff going on around the town of Madison. And along with that, we're gonna be just doing a lot of crazy stuff here around the campsite and stuff. It's gonna be a very fun video. Before we get started, make sure you all leave a like on the video. Make sure you guys also subscribe to the channel. This is gonna be a very cool video. Let's go ahead and get started. There is the river what do I just hear our car starting what oh look at that they have the buoy set up and everything or at least in the first turn here now the plan is we're gonna walk down uh, the road for a little bit and then after that we're going up to a coffee shop so uh, one I can use uh, their uh, Wi-Fi to upload the Gunnersville vlog and also because we're just gonna get breakfast and stuff so they have all the boats in the pits they are getting prepared now testing is in like uh, I think only an hour or two or so, depending on when they get the course fully set up. We're now heading up into town. We're gonna be going to the Madison Coffee Shop that's along Main Street, uh, and I'm gonna upload the Gunnersville video. There's literally people that already got chairs set up for the parade, and it is early morning. Listen in the distance. You can hear the GPs going. So they actually just started testing. I just got done doing the upload and stuff, literally at that coffee shop. I just literally uploaded a full 30 minute vlog and that video is insane. If you haven't seen the Gunnersville video, make sure to check that out. But testing has started for the GPs. I think H1 is right after that. So we're heading back down that way now. Main Street is already packed out to capacity almost with chairs and the parade's still a good seven hours a little way. I think it's 11 right now if I remember right 11 something maybe I don't know math what English second we get back down here the Grand Prix stop but I'm gonna go run my backpack to the campsite and then we'll probably head towards like the main pit area start finish line and stuff also through yesterday and also today I've met up with so many people that watch the videos or fans of the channel that are here that either are like huge fans of H1 or even within the sport of H1 crew members whatever um, even I heard that uh, Corey Peabody and J Michael Kelly watched some of my videos or watched the videos so we're now walking down to the main area and stuff it looks pretty crowded especially for a Friday morning but basically the schedule is in just like 30 minutes they're supposed to do H1 unlimited testing for about an hour speaking of H1 Unlimiteds, there's the 440. And it's not running this weekend, but it's here. But then after that, they're doing uh, some more uh, testing for the smaller boats, then a small break, and then H1 Unlimited qualifying. They have the slings on the U1 home street boat uh, driven by rookie Dylan Runney. That will probably be the first boat out for testing here. There goes another pro light. There's now like three Grand Prix out testing at once. They might as well just race. Before the H1s get on the water, I think I'm gonna go over to Chill Belly Treats and I think I'm gonna get some ice cream and stuff because it's getting hot out. Yesterday was actually really nice due to the storms. Today though, is actually getting pretty hot. I got uh, a cookie dough brain freeze. It's basically like a blizzard from Dairy Queen. These things are amazing. The U1 is being lifted into the water right now. So we're heading down to the shoreline. So I think the nine is already in the water as well. They're lowering the eight in right now. So there's three boats getting ready to go out for testing. There goes the U1. Next up on the water is the U9 and Corey Peabody, uh, last week's winner in Gunnersville. And this is his first time on this river since last year's huge flip in the final heat on the final lap. And I would say probably the favorite this year. Here is the U8 and J. Michael Kelly going out onto the course. The 
the Gunnersville race course that we were at last week. That is the widest turns in all of H1 Unlimited here in Madison. These turns are the smallest turns in all of boat racing. Now here comes the U11 with Jamie Nielsen. And the final H1 boat going out for testing is the U40. Now this boat had some damage last week after it ran over the upside down U91. Uh, luckily though it wasn't any major damage and they have got it repaired in time and are here for racing. So that will be it for our first uh, round of testing. Uh, next up, they have Grand Prix and uh, Pro Light testing, and then after that is H1 qualifying. They already got concert stuff going on. They're preparing for tonight. We're currently walking back down to the campsite right now. Okay, so Grand Prix and Pro Light testing has been going on. It's actually almost over, and we are heading down to watch qualifying. The 40 will be the first boat out for qualifying here. They were the top qualifier last week. Can they do that again here? Each boat gets to go out twice. So like all five boats will get three laps here to qualify. Then they'll restart the order and the other five or the five boats will then go out again if they want to. Here comes the U1. Can we see this in the distance? There's a bounce house over there on the Kentucky side of the river. By the way, the 40's fastest time was 155.6. The U8 coming out now to qualify. The U1's fastest time was a 153, so two miles per hour below the 40. See if the eight can get higher than that. He just got the exact to the T same time as the U1, 153.149. To get the exact same time to like the thousandth decimal or whatever that is, that's insane. The U11 now out to qualify. The U11 will get a 149.5. Final boat out for the first round of qualifying is the one and only U9 and Corey Peabody trying for that fastest time here, at least on round one of qualifying. Someone's letting off fireworks as the U9 goes by. One fifty four point nine is his fast time. So Peabody does not beat Dustin Eccles in qualifying, but like I said, each boat will get to go out one more time. But at least right now, Dustin Eccles in front. Dustin Eccles won qualifying last week, and who knows? By the way, I'd like to mention they don't have to go out for a second time of qualifying since the 40s ahead. If he doesn't want to go out, he doesn't have to, or he could wait and see if anybody beats his time and then goes out. We're back down to the campsite and it looks like the U1 is out for their second round of qualifying. So the one improved his time. He got a 154.4. So that puts him in third place now behind Peabody and Eccles. Okay, apparently there's a car down here that is painted like the Home Street boat, the U1. I want to go see this. Instead of the Home Street racing boat, we actually have the Home Street racing car as you see. That's actually cool. I'm sure that'll be in the parade tonight. Says the driver's Jimmy Shine, not Jimmy Shane. Jimmy Shine. Look at this. That's not a rescue boat. J. Michael Kelly was literally about to go out and this boat is just entered the race course. He is not a rescue boat. Police boats right over there. They're supposed to be stopping them, but I guess they didn't have time to because he's just running through here. Um, buddy, we're trying to run some hydroplanes. What a doofus. Now he's slowing down. Hurry up. We want to see some boats on the water, and you're not the boat we want to see. Okay, so here we go. Now the gate is going onto the course. That was a crazy little sequence of events. So 
So he is .4 behind Corey Peabody, his teammate. So he passes the U1 on that run, but just behind second place, Corey Peabody. Okay, we're heading back up here because since it rained yesterday, uh, this is still kind of muddy. And I have Crocs on. Not the best combination with all this. Here comes the U9, Corey Peabody going out for a second time to try to beat the 40. He just broke it. 156. He got a 156.006, so he beat Eccles by .3, basically. Now, though, Eccles has 16 minutes to try to get back out on the course and retake the qualifying lead, or else Peabody will be the top qualifier. So that's an official wrap-up for qualifying. The 40 did not have time to go out, so Corey Peabody wins qualifying very close. Now, though, that's it for racing today, or hydroplanes on the water. Tomorrow, we will have our first heat. I think we have three heats tomorrow, then two heats Sunday, plus the final, obviously, Sunday. Now, I'll be vlogging all day tomorrow, but I'm not going to show really any of the boat racing, at least the 3H1 heats, because I'm going to put that all into one huge video and make it kind of like I did for the Gunnersville video for Sunday's vlog, if that makes sense. Or I say Sunday like it's coming out on Sunday. The Sunday here, you know what I mean. It's now time for the Madison Regatta Parade. It starts at 6 o'clock instead of 7 for some reason this year, so we actually got to hurry because that's in literally less than an hour. Look at that. We got an abandoned train car. I wonder if we could walk on that. I hear the fire trucks and stuff, so the parade is coming this way right now. Oh, that was it. That's all the parade. It's over. There's the display boat, um, the old Miss Madison design. Now we have all the expensive cars coming through with people on them. It's a stampede for candy. They just ran out in the middle of the cars. <laughs> there's, oh my gosh, there's the trailer for the U91. Sadly not racing because last week, uh, yeah. There's the GP88, the Hydrofish. Hey, I think that's better than any candy. A root or a meter stick. What is that? Watch out for a flying t-shirt. What was the year someone got hit by a t-shirt or something? What was that? And there is the U1, the hometown boat. Dylan running and Andrew Tater waving from the top. Now that looks fun to drive. I lied, those cars down there would actually be a lot more fun to drive. Here comes the two strong boats. There's the U9. Corey's giving out candy. What is he giving out? Is that mini footballs? There's the U8 right there. I don't think that guy on the skateboard is part of the parade, but he's kind of forcing his way in it. Oh, he just jumped over something. And the grand finale of the parade every year, the garbage trucks. Okay, now that the parade's over, the sun's starting to set a little bit, uh, I'm gonna be walking down uh, this way. Don't throw it backwards. It went backwards. Frisbee just came out of nowhere. Okay, we've been throwing the football. There's cornhole going on over there. Something else going on over here. There's a huge bonfire going. Okay, so everyone, we've just been hanging around the campsite for a while. We went down to the concert for a little bit, but uh, now it's really late and it, I'm gonna go to sleep. So that's gonna be all for today's video. Thank you all for watching our second video from the Madison Regatta trip. It was a lot of fun and uh, a lot more crazy videos coming. Uh, but thank you all for watching this one. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like on the video, make sure to comment on the video, and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new. And uh, till next video, see ya! Say that it feels right